Well, thank you for joining Brothers of the Word, because, brother, you need the Word. We welcome all of you joining us by television or joining us online at brothersoftheword.com or social media. Welcome to today's service. Always a wonderful delight and joy to have you to tune in and join us and worship with us. We love you and appreciate you so much. Always happy to have you. We'd like to share just a little humor. A child asked his father, he said, how were people born? And so his father said, Adam and Eve made babies, and then their babies became adults and made babies and so on. The child then went to his mother and asked her the same question. And she told him, well, we were monkeys, and then we evolved to become like we are now. The child ran back to his father and said, you lied to me. His father replied, he said, he said, no, your mom was talking about her side of the family. <laughs> I figured the men would like that one. <laughs> Ladies, we can switch it around if you like, so we can, we can make it that the child asked the mother first. And <laughs> but the men like to have the upper hand every, every once in a while. <laughs> Most of the times we, we, we give the ladies the upper hand, but every once in a while, let us have the upper hand, so we appreciate it. <laughs> well, we're talking about, uh, we're doing part two in a little series entitled Faith When Life Gets Hard. Faith When Life Gets Hard. Faith When Life Gets Hard. Oh, man, um, life can have a lot of bumps and bruises, uh, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of ups and downs, and that's the journey of life. Life is a journey. Life would be very boring if it was just flat line. It would be boring. That means you're dead. It's a flat line. So it's the ups and the downs. Uh, that's all a part of the journeys of life. And and so there are mountain peaks and there are valleys that we go through. And we go through, life has some difficult times, has some hard times, has some challenging times. Um, people are, uh, people can get frustrated, they can become discouraged, they can become fatigued, exhausted, disappointed. Um, they get tired of the pain, they get tired of dealing with situations, sometimes it can seem like one thing after another, and sometimes it just becomes, life can feel unbearable. It can be one thing after another. In fact, the Apostle Paul, we're, we're pulling a lot from him because he, um, he said that the, he, had a, he had a thorn in his flesh, and he prayed to God to have it removed. And, and uh, God said, no, I'm going to leave it there because my grace is sufficient for you. And uh, the Bible goes on to tell what that thorn in the flesh was. He said, it's the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Buffet means one blow after another. And so Paul was being persecuted everywhere he went, so he understood that that was he understood that was the work of the enemy trying to stop the ministries, trying to stop the cause of Christ, trying to stop his work wherever he went. And so it was a messenger of Satan to buffet him. It was one blow, one persecution after another, one thing after another. He talked about, he talked about some of his trials when life got hard. He said, man, he said, I've been shipwrecked. I've been stoned, been thrown in jail. I've been beaten. I've been lost out at sea. I've been lost out in the wilderness. I've suffered at the hands of robbers. And, you know, he, so he had a whole, just a whole list of all the things that he constantly had, had gone through in life. And he had some hard times. He had hard times. And so if there's anybody qualified to talk about faith when life gets hard, it's the Apostle Paul. He, he has a long resume. Uh, even in the book of Philippians, um, he wrote the book of Philippians in prison, in prison. And actually, the book of Philippians is the most triumphant 
joyful book in the whole Bible. And that was written while a man was in stock and bonds, tied up in prison. And uh, yet it was the most positive, uplifting, encouraging, inspiring book in the whole Bible. The most joyful book was written in prison. And so Paul had learned how to have faith in hard times, how to have faith in hard times. He didn't let he didn't let the hard times um, overcome him or beat him or uh, get the best of him. Paul had learned how to roll with the punches. He had learned how to always see God's hand working in his life. He had his eye on heaven. He understood that he was a citizen of heaven, that there's nothing this world could do to, to change that. And so he just had, he had just an eternal joy that he uh, drew from and that he kept his eyes on. He was just so grateful, man, just so grateful. And, and so nothing, nothing could really bother him here in this world because he understood that this world is just temporary. This is just for a moment. This is just for a moment, but we're going to be with him forever. We're going to be with him forever. And so he didn't let the little stuff down here bother him. And so we can glean a lot from his life. We can, we can glean a lot from a lot of characters in the Bible that faced some difficult times, and they had to have faith uh, when, when life really got hard. And so we'll, we'll talk about some of those, um, and we'll glean, we'll glean from some of those in this little series and, and learn from um, these times when life gets hard, faith when life gets hard. And so um, let's, read a, let's read a little scripture over in, the, we were using as a beginning text over in Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, and uh, verses 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then verse 2 says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And then in verse 3, now this is where it talk, starts talking about the hard times. This is where it starts talking about the hard times in this particular chapter. In verse 3, and it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. So the prior verse, he had just said that we, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So he was rejoicing, you know, in the fact that one day he'll be in the very presence of God and see the glory of God. And so he was just thinking about heaven and his home and all of that. So he was rejoicing in that. But he says, not only that, but then in verse 3 he says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We glory in tribulations also. And uh, so that's, that's, so tribulation is... Is trouble. Tribulation is when life gets difficult. Tribulation is when life gets hard. And he said, we glory in tribulations also. We glory in tribulation. Let us know that Christians aren't excluded from difficulties. Christians are not excluded from difficulties. And in fact, sometimes when you become a Christian, sometimes difficulties actually increase. That's because now you're going opposite the devil. And so he's now opposing you. See, if you're running with him, he doesn't have to encounter you too much because you are, he already has you. <laughs> so you're running along with him. But when you turn and give your life to Christ, now you're opposing him. And so now you got more difficulty coming from the enemy because now you're, you're his opposition. You're his opposition. And the Bible clearly talks about that. It says... Uh, sometimes uh, when, when the sower sows the word, the enemy comes immediately to steal that word. So notice that. He'll stir up things to try to get, get you off of God's word. He'll stir things up in your life. So he's trying to always get you off of God's word. So he'll stir up things to choke the word. He'll, show, he'll stir up things to distract you. He'll, he'll try to discourage you. He'll try to disappoint you. He'll try to 
lead you into defeat and into depression. He'll try to do all of those things. Uh, so a lot of times when you become a Christian, actually your difficulties increase merely because now you have a, you have a, you have a sworn enemy. You have a, you have a foe against you. And, um, but the good news is greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. That's the good news. That's the good news. That's the good news. Praise God. And plus, we ain't scared of the devil. We'll, we, I, man, we'll kick his little tail. <laughs> See, the, I like the Bible. The Bible, the, the Bible doesn't call us to be wimpy. The Bible, Paul told Timothy, he said, endure hardness like a good soldier in Christ Jesus. Man, get ready to do some warfare. Get ready to kick the devil's tail. Get ready to put him in his place. I love that. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. So it lets you know there's some opposition. There are some hard times. There are some hard places. But we don't cave in. We don't quit. We don't, we don't just give up when things get hard. No, man, that's the time that, that's the time you start licking your lips. <laughs> oh, man, that's the time when you want a, you want a piece. Of, come tell them, come give me a piece. I was watching, I, I should have brought this video, this um, this older guy, he, he looked like he was about 75 years old, and so he looked like an easy target to this mugger. And so they caught this on video, but this mugger ran up to him and, uh, you know, and tried to rob him. That 75-year-old man put his bag down and did just like this. He said, he said and he did like this. He said, bring it. He said, bring it. <laughs> and the monkey actually tucked his tail and ran off. He didn't realize that he was going to have a fight. He thought that was going to be just a, a, a crippled, decrepit old man that he could easily take advantage of and, t and take his wallet. No, that old man said, bring it. He said, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the way we are. So that's the way we have to remind ourselves as Christians. Man, we don't just, we don't quit at the sign of trouble. We don't give up and cave in. No, man, tell the devil to bring it. Tell him to bring it. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Praise God. So God has armed us and God has equipped us. God has given us all of these wonderful weapons of, of warfare. And they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. And so we're, we're excited, man. We're excited to be, it's exciting to be living in dangerous times. It's exciting to be living in hard times. It's exciting, it's exciting, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Well, I'm, I'm trying to give you heaven's perspective. I'm trying to give you heaven's perspective. I'm trying to give you heaven's perspective. Now, notice this. So it says we, we, we glory in tribulations. We glory in difficulty. We glory in trouble. We glory in problems. We glory in hard times. That's what he said there. So notice this. He gives us the proper attitude. The proper attitude in meeting adversity is to glory in them or to rejoice or, to, or as the apostle James tells us over in the book of James chapter 1 notice what he says now you can tell they're kindred spirit because this is the Holy Spirit all scriptures written and given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit and so you can tell the kindred spirit Paul said we glory in our tribulations James says count it all joy when you fall in the divers' tests, trials, temptations, tribulation, count it out joy. Paul is saying rejoice. We glory in it. James says count it out joy. Count it out joy. Get happy. Get excited. Glory in it. That's the Christian perspective. So the Bible teaches us to actually rejoice in, in hard times. Rejoice in hard times. It goes against the world, um, but... We're not of the world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We operate from a different kingdom. We're from a different kingdom. So the Bible says you to, you to rejoice in hard times. You to glory in hard times. You to have joy in hard times. Count, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, tests, tribulations, trouble. Count it 
all joy. And the reason you can count it joy is because you know something. It's because you have someone. It's because you've been equipped. And uh, so this is, this, is, this is our response as believers, as children of God, as people of God. This is our response as Christians. So notice, it's not just an emotional reaction, but it's a deliberate appraisal of the situation from God's perspective. So I'm giving you God's perspective on trouble. I'm giving you God's perspective on difficulty. I'm giving you God's perspective on challenges in life. Here's, um, here's, here's, here's God's perspective. When you, when you hit any type of uh, difficult times or situations, here's God's perspective. This is a time for you to grow. This is a time for you to develop. This is a time for you to learn. This is a time for you to see what's in you. It's a time for you to see what you're made of. So a lot of, that's why they're called tests. Tests is designed to see what you're made of. Tests is designed to see what you know. And so what if you went to school all your life, you did all your homework, you went to all your classes, but what if there was never a test? You would never know what you know. You'll never know how good you are. You'll never know if you learned the information. You'll never know if you can apply it, if you can use it. And so tests are designed to see what's in you, to see what you're made of, to see how you'll do. And so life itself is a test. Life itself is a test. Life itself is a test. When someone something tries to irritate you or upset you, remember, it's only a test. It's only a test. But as believers, it's an open book test. It's an open book test. <laughs> Man, I used to love open book tests. It's an open book test as believers. It's an open book test. So we get to open the Bible when we take our test. And we can, so we can look at what we need and find what we need and apply it to our lives and live it out. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm giving you God's perspective on, on difficult days and on challenging situations. Uh, this is God's perspective. And so we counted our joy, but and it's, this is a, it's a deliberate appraisal of the situation from God's perspective. And so God is saying that you, you see what's in you, you get a chance to see God's faithfulness. One reason you get excited when you're facing difficulty because you get a, this is a chance to see God's faithfulness. It's another chance to see God's faithfulness. And so you immediately say, God, I can't wait to see what you do in this situation. How are you going to use it for your glory? How are you going to use it to strengthen me? How are you going to use it and bring something positive out of it? How are you going to spin it? How are you going to use it to strengthen me, to better me, to make me a, 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 a more of a experienced vessel that can be used for your glory. I can't wait to see your miracle working power in the middle of this. And so this is why it's exciting to the believer. That's why Paul got so excited. He got so excited when, when things were stirring up because there's another opportunity to see God's faithfulness, to see his, his faithfulness in another way, a brand new light. You get a chance to see his, see his faithfulness. You get a chance to see his faithful. You get a chance to see that God is good even when life isn't. You never confuse the two. You never confuse your circumstance with the goodness of God. Circumstance might be bad, but it has no effect on the goodness of God. God is still good even when life isn't. So life may not appear good, but God is still good. God is still good. God is still good. The Bible says that uh, he rejoices over you to do your good. God's always working for your good. God is always for you. He's never against you. God is always for you. God is always good. In fact, that'll keep you from uh, fainting in, in trouble because the psalmist said, he said, I would have fainted. I would have given up and quit. 
if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so when you're going through a trial, that's one thing that keeps you going. God, I know your goodness will find me. It'll eventually find me. It'll eventually catch up. Things look bad right now, but I know your goodness will eventually catch me. It'll eventually find me. I know it will. So I would have fainted. So that's what the psalm said. He said, I would have fainted. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so as believers, we have that hope. We have that faith. We have that encouragement. We know God's goodness will eventually find us. Might not find you tonight. Might not find you in the morning. But it will eventually find you. And that's what keeps you going. He believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so if your life is bad right now, don't stop right now while it's bad. Keep going until you see his goodness. Because it will eventually find you. It will eventually find you. He's faithful to his goodness to you. He's always good. He'll never stop. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, God says, I'll never stop doing you good. Never stop doing you good. That is a covenant. That is a covenant. I will never stop doing you good. That's a hope and encouragement. So when you're facing difficult days, just know that you'll, you'll eventually see the goodness of God. You'll see the goodness of God. And then as you mature in your faith, you'll see it. You'll see his goodness even in the middle of the trouble. You'll see it in the middle of the trouble. And that's where Paul was. He was that's why he was rejoicing in prison. He was seeing God's goodness right in the middle. Of, Paul looked at it like, huh, I'm locked up. Okay, I'm locked up. But I can use this as an opportunity to minister to other prisoners. Paul got, man, Paul was having camp meeting in prison. He got more, he got people saved. He got, he got uh, Caesar's household saved. Man, he, he was, man, he had ministry going throughout the prison. And so Paul was like, this might look like something bad happened, but no, man, this is God's plan all along. Paul, man, people, faith was, man, faith was, it was going in all directions out of that prison. People were excited. Other prisoners were listening. Guards were being saved. And so, man, <laughs> Paul was in revival in jail. So notice, but notice his appraisal of the situation. He knew that, that God will use it for God's purpose. God's purpose, there's always a purpose there. And uh, so he had just a, a wonderful appraisal of the situation. It's just, just so encouraging. So encouraging. Man, I'm excited. Anybody excited about trouble? <laughs> this will have you looking for trouble. This will have you looking for trouble. This will have you looking for trouble. I remember one time I was, I was, a, uh, I was a teenager. I was probably about uh, 16. And I, had, I was on a trip with my father. And uh, and so we were, we were, we were staying in two different, uh, we were staying in, in two different hot, hotel rooms at, at our complex, and we were out of town together. And so, but we only had one car, because we, we rode down together, but we had our own separate hotel room. And so we had made an agreement. We said that uh, what we'll do, we'll just leave the car key on the tire, of the car, so that way, whichever one of us has to go out and use the car, all we got to do is reach on the tire and get the car key. We don't have to try to go to each other's room to get the key, so that's the agreement we made. But one day, I was down, I was getting ready to go somewhere. I don't know where I was going, but I was going somewhere. <laughs> so I went down, and I was bent down, revving the top of the tire to get my key. And this gentleman thought, I was trying to break in the car. He thought I was trying to steal a car. Keep in, keep in mind, I'm a 16-year-old kid. And, uh, and so he had, of course, he had, he had profiled me and all of that. And uh, so I got, I, got I, was, I don't know, I, I got so overcome with fear, it just gripped me. And I couldn't even say anything, couldn't even respond. And uh, so he walked away. But then I started thinking about it. I said, wait a minute. This is my car. I'm getting my keys on my own car. And so I went looking for the man. I went back looking for him. I, cause I, now it had, it had dawned on me that I had done nothing wrong. <laughs> so I was looking for the man. 
that's the way you start looking for trouble. Once it dawns on you who you are in Christ, what has been given to you, all the advantages that God is using it for, you'll start looking for trouble. <laughs> you'll go around looking for trouble. You'll be waiting on something to happen so that you can use your faith, so that you can use your joy, so that you can believe God, so that you can see his faith, so that you can see his good. You'll start looking for trouble once you understand all the, all the full advantages that are happening there. Oh, man. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so far ahead of myself. I'm just, oh, just having fun, having fun. Um, I'm a little ahead of myself, but I just want to say this. He goes on down, and he says that one, one of the reasons we rejoice in trouble, we rejoice when life is difficult, is because it produces patience or it exercises patience, puts patience to, to use. And so now you begin to see the things of God being, becoming operative. And so the, the operation of the things of God are greater than the difficulties that are attacking or, or the difficulties that you're in. So the operation of the things of God become far more glorious than the attacks or the setbacks or the difficulty or the trouble or the trauma. The operation of the things of God, the operation of the patient, patience becomes far more glorious, far more beneficial, far more useful than the trouble that you're in. And so this is why so I begin to understand, so man, no wonder Paul was, oh, no wonder he was rejoicing in trouble. No wonder he got happy when things were going wrong. And he, because he, he had heaven's perspective on it. He had God's word on it. He had, he had, he had insight from the Holy Spirit on it. He, had, he saw the operation of the things of God. That's really when they kick in the gear. They kick in the gear when that's when you need them the most. That's when they kick in the gear. They kick in the gear Right in the middle of difficult days, right in the middle of hard times. And that's when you that's when you start drawing, that's when you start drawing and you get a chance to, oh man, you get a chance to use it. That's why, you know, I, I get sort of I get sort of uh, I don't know, sometimes I get sort of flabbergasted when I see Christians they go to church all their lives, twice a week. And uh, then when a little difficulty comes up, they just fold up. Amen. I'm like, this is when you use everything you've been getting. You've been getting it for years and for years and for years. This is when you use it. This is when you use it. Think about this. It would be like, it would be like say if you were on a football team. If you, were on a, if you were on a football team and you practice and you practice and you practice and there was never a game. Wouldn't that be a letdown? You practice all these plays. You practice all these routes. You practice all these defenses. You practice all these sets. You practice all of these trick plays. You practice and you practice and you practice, but there's never a game. You never get a chance to use it. Oh, that's, that's a terrible way to live. And so trouble or affliction or difficult days, that's like game time. That's game time. Now you get a chance to use everything you've learned in Bible study, everything you've learned on Sunday mornings, every time you've learned in your quiet prayer time, everything you've, everything you've learned from the Holy Spirit, now it's game time. It's game time. Your difficult days become game time. That's when you suit up. That's when you suit up. It's game time now. Oh, man, there's nothing more exciting to an athlete who's well prepared than game time. Oh, see, I'm an athlete. <laughs> Y'all know where I'm going. Y'all know where I'm going. Y'all know where I'm going. I mean, I'm not, only, I'm not only a star basketball player, but listen, listen, that's beside the point. I'm not talking about that. But when I was growing up, I played football. I played football. 
A lot of people don't know that they think I'm just LeBron James. No, I played football as well. <laughs> but the most exciting day when I played football was game day. Because we practiced all week. All week we had to run down the hill, and all week we had to do calisthenics. All week we were hitting it, man. We were doing I was in the best shape of my life when I played football because we had to work and train every day. But the most exciting day was game day because this is when I, man, I, I had a bull collar that I put on. I was number 71. And I, <laughs> I played, I played uh, nose guard. I played nose guard. I played, I was, man, I was tough. I was tough. The sinners used to shake when they see me line up. <laughs> but game day was exciting because now we get a chance to use everything we've been practicing. And that's the way it is with Christians. Everything you've been learning, man, your difficult days is when you get a chance to put it all to use. Oh, you get a chance to use it. You get to show everything Everything that God's been teaching you all your life, now you get a chance to use it. You get a chance to use it. And so that's why it's exciting. That's a, so it's game day. You look at difficult days, it's game day. It's game day. It's game day. It's game day. Nothing's more exciting than game day. You get to put that jersey on and put on your helmet. Man, it's game day. Let's get it. Let's go. It's game day. It's the most exciting time in an athlete's life is the game day. It, it's the game day. It's a game that's exciting. It's exciting the game day. It's game day. It's game day. This is when you, when you lay it all out. You lay it all out. Praise. Man, y'all got me talking all about my, my athletic. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. Gonna, we just having fun. We having fun in the Holy Ghost. But I'm, I'm going to stop right there. But uh, those of you who are watching my television, I want you to go to brothersoftheword.com. You can listen to this entire series absolutely free of charge faith when life gets hard you can also email it to a friend but thank you so much for joining us today at brothers of the word because brother you need the word From brothers